Hey guys, how's it going? True here. And if I give you a second to see if you recognize this game, this game is The Division. It's been sort of, I guess you could call it a guilty pleasure. It's the game I've been playing a lot lately. And I have a lot of fun. It's tons of fun. It's, if you've known me for a while, you know I, get, I was hooked on Destiny for a bit. I was hooked on Diablo 3 for a bit. And I'd like to say it's a happy medium between the two. Give or take. That's the easiest way to describe it in most other popular games. Now, I want to talk about my build in the division because, as you could suspect, I play a very support heavy build. And it's really, it's an interesting build. I'm really happy about it. It's a balanced support build. And I have weapons that go with it. There's talents and skills that go for it to amplify it. And I'm going to spend all two right now. First, just to explain anything division wise, you get abilities. Like, you get special gear, like, that's a hill. Or I can amplify cover. So when you take cover, you get stronger. Alright? It's things like that. It's a shooting game. You can shoot. Change weapons. You have three weapons. I mean, so basic stuff like that. And I use a controller, so, I mean... That's just my preference, but... Simple little things like that. That's the division. Now, if you're watching this because you just want to watch my video you never played division, all the information is going to go over your head. But if you play a division, you're going to know a little bit what I'm talking about as we go over everything, alright? First thing we're going to look at is skills, then we're going to look at my gear and explain my gear. Actually, you know, let's look at gear first. Um, gear is important. Oh, let's help a civilian out real quick. Hell, I'm well met, civilian. Want soda? There you go. Oh, thank you. Alright, so first things first, let's look at gear, alright? Let's go to inventory. I'm pretty geared, I won't lie. I am pretty geared. As I said before, it's a balanced set. So look, let's look at my stats. Uh, there's three stats. There's firearms, stamina, and electronics. As I said, I'm support. Support, it's easier to get into electronics more than anything else, but I don't really, I have just a little bit more. And I'll explain how I got my electronics higher than that in a second. But for firearms, that's your damage. Stamina is your survivability. And skill power is like your attack and your skills abilities, all right? First things first, let's go ahead and look at armor. This is one of the pieces I think is required for this support build. Would be, you need a high-end chest with Vigorous on it, alright? You can build your stats any way you want. Ideally, I just recommend balanced. Because you won't be able to do damage, you won't be able to survive, and you won't be able to support. So you need high the trunks. But I recommend you get Vigorous, alright? It grants overheal to all healing skills. So, what that basically means is, on my healing skill... It overheals. So let's go look at the healing skill real quick before I show you. This is my healing skill. First aid, heal. Alright? Normally, you need to take the special talent and make it overheal. But since I have the armor, I can take other talents, such as a talent called Defibrator, that can revive people if they go down and I shoot them with it. And since I have the mastery, the AoE heal stays in the area and they instantly get overshield when they get up. It's really effective. Alright? So that chest piece, phenomenal chest piece. It, or you can always go with booster shot to give them damage reduction and more damage output. That's all about preference. I like the Defibrillator lately just because I was doing the incursion and it really became useful. But that's the first piece of armor. And here, this is a gear set. I'm going for a Tactician's Authority. And that's part of the reason I have so much skill power is that. Now normally you can get a high-end piece of gear that just has like on Mask, you can just roll skill power on it as one of the major attributes. But I couldn't get that to show up, so I literally went for another fire. I went for another weapons mod. So I got two weapons mod on there. And we'll go over mods in a second. Alright, so knee pads. So, ain't nothing special here. Knee pads, usually I go for the extra scavenging. Knee pads, just get decent knee pads to build, help build your stats up. In this case, I got tacticians. If I get the two set bonus. Alright, backpack. Backpack is debatable. By default, I like specialized just because it's the most it's the easiest way to add skill power to you. It's not much skill power, mind you. It's like adds 13% of firearms to stamina to skill power. So add my firearms to stamina, that's like what, 4,000? 13% of that is what? 13% of a fucking 1,000 is like 130. Well, third, so times that by 4. There's math, 12, 
520. Yeah, it's about another 520 skill power. Basically, nothing. But, look at the major attributes. You see, adds 5,530 skill power. That's a good backpack. That is a really solid backpack. So, I got that. Gloves. Gloves don't matter. You get whatever gloves you want. I recommend just build for your stats. Once again, holster. Build for your stats. Mods are important. Like I said, I, was going to tell, I told you I was going to talk about mods here in a second. We're going to take all my mods off. So I look, we can look at them all together. Alright, so let's look at my mods. Alright. First things first, prototype firearms mod. Major attributes, add skill power. Add skill power. Add skill power. Oh, haste. Add skill power. Add health. Add skill power. Now, I don't have all my mods with skill power yet. I think I have a skill haste one I'm using for the time being. But if you notice, I, a good chunk of my stats came from my mods. And that's how I was able to balance everything out. Alright? So let's go ahead and quick these mods. Look at my stats now. It's 1595, 2015, and 2101. So let's equip these mods. So we're going to get that one. That one. That one. Uh, that one. Mm -hmm. That one. And I think I still have to use the skill ice. Or I can go health. Let's, let's go ahead and go with firearms and skill ice. So there we go. So now, if you look, my stats are back there being pretty high. My skill power been up pretty high amount. A very high amount. Alright? So that's my mods and armor. The main only piece that is, like, required for the way I play and support is the chest with the vigorous talent. Everything else is optional, but it really helps to have as much as high skill power as possible, so when you do put that heal on people, it overheals them to maximum benefit, all right? It really helps out, all right? So let's talk about my... Please, civilian. Here. There you go. That was cruel of me, but that's okay. Weapons. All right? I won't lie. There is... This is probably the hardest part of this whole build, is this gun right here. Caduceus. The Caduceus is an assault rifle, and it's got one really good talent, and it's called Cool Headed. Performing headshot reduces all skill cooldowns by 5.5%. That's huge. <laughs> and as you saw, this weapon fires pretty quickly. So say I hit all those headshots, my skill cooldowns will be coming right back. So let's actually, let's go down to the firing range. We'll go inside JTF base. And I'll show you how effective this is. And I'll show you my secondary weapon. I'll show you... Actually, I got really lucky. But I'll show you what to aim for in secondary weapon as well. I won't lie. Both my weapons have cool-headed. And they're both pretty good. Cool-headed basically is like key for this build. Just because it helps your cooldown reduction. That means you can get out more healing. More over-shielding. More res as you need to. Move your smart cover around. Which I'll explain about this here soon. Alright, so, okay, we're gonna heal. It's up again. I actually could not. I am stuck waiting on the internal cooldown that I cannot get past. There's just nothing I can do. But that's awesome because that means whenever I need to heal someone, I can pop up, get some headshots, get my heal back up. Say so someone goes down, I hit, I res them. Then they're still low health. I get my heal back, I can res them, I can just shoot it again at them. Well, can't do it inside, but that's essentially what it is. And it's really effective. <laughs> oh. Skill back. Alright. Caduceus is definitely basically required. But if you can't get Caduceus, what we need to look for is another weapon. Like, I have a classic M1A that has cool headed on it. And M1A, same thing as Caduceus. So, we're gonna do this. Look at my skill cooldown. Not as fast as my Caduceus, mind you. But, still increasing my cooldown a lot. I'm getting, it's basically letting me get 50% cooldown reduction. And that's big. Like I keep saying before, cooldown reduction is big, and that's me put out more healing output or move my smart cover more. And I'll explain what smart cover is here in a moment. I, I start explaining abilities and why. All right. Now, one thing is, if you get a chance, your secondary weapon, you want it to have 
something that does like bleed. All right. Now here's the reason. All right. Technically, in the division, there's status effects. There's bleeds and burns. Now the cool thing about status effects is they count as headshots. So let's see if I can't get a bleed on the side. I don't think I actually can because it's fake. So we're, we're gonna go find something to kill. So all right, let's go find something to kill. That hope I don't kill in one hit. We're gonna come here, play mission, hard. All right, we're gonna come here. We're gonna see if I can't get that proc, and I'm gonna show you how a bleed will give me headshot damage. And headshot damage, since I have cool headed, means it starts taking that cooldown reduction. So if I get headshot, all I gotta do is every now and then. With my sniper rifle, poke, get a headshot. If I get that bleed effect, awesome. I get that cooldown reduction. Or if I say I use a special ammo, such as flaming bullets, I get that cooldown reduction. All right? Sarah was using the site as a mass grave, which explains why the so let's go, go in here. We're going to investigate somebody more. That's not working. Okay, not my intention. Damn it. I'm gonna kill everything too quickly. Actually, I just go for body shots since I just want the bleed effect. Come on. Oh my god, this is gonna be tough. Alright, so we're just gonna cheat. I'm gonna go ahead and activate incinerate bullets. Let's go ahead and shoot. Alright. Do you see how the, my cooldowns are chipping up as he's burning? That's what the bleed effect and cooldowns do. Oops, that was not my intention. That was my intention. Alright, so essentially, since I have bleed effect, that's what it does. Alright? So let's go ahead and fast travel. Uh, we'll fucking chill here. Because there's anything else I need to show you. We'll, we'll come out here, though. Alright? That's fine, we'll leave mission area. So that's something you want to aim for is the weapons that apply bleeds, burns, anything like that. Very effective little bonus to your cooldown recovery, okay? Now, I think I pretty much explained the weapon, sidearm. Give her a sidearm you want. I mean, a sidearm's a sidearm. It's whatever. All right? So let's go ahead and look at our skills now. Skills, probably one of the more important parts of this build, all right? If you just have the skills, you're fine. Because you can actually, there's a way you can use the skills just to get cooldown reduction as it is. And any sort of healing you can do is good healing, okay? And since you're, if you should be going to have a more skill power than the average person, your skills are amplified. So let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, we'll look at Smart Cover. It's one of the skills I recommend. Son of a bitch. It's all I place, so fine. So yeah, I didn't want to do that. That's good. Take cover. We're just going to chill here. Oh, I was saying smart cover. If you look at the attributes, let's look at the stats, all right? Damage resistance. Base is 25.6%, which I don't know why it's 25.6%. I much. I think I probably have like a piece of armor that adds to it, all right? Mine, on the other hand, is damage resistance for 61.6%. Damage buff of 48.7%. Now, where this is interesting is this. That's really high. That's a huge damage resistance damage buff. And it's because I have so much skill power. I'm actually pretty close to the cap. I think the cap's like 45,000. Somewhere near there. And I'm a very balanced build. I'm able to use a lot of weapon and benefits. So stacking all that skill power via mods, making sure I have those abilities on my mask and my backpack, really help out. And even that skill power boost allow me to put down very powerful smart cover. Which is why I recommend smart covers on the things I use. And the ones I prefer is Recharger. Allies using Reinforced Cover slow to recover their health and get their skill cooldowns decreased. This is as much for me as it is for my allies. For one, it's healing output. And any healing output is good. Now, it doesn't apply over healing like my other, like my backpack gives me. Sadly to say, it doesn't. But any healing is good healing, alright? So if they're taking cover hiding, they're healing over time. And they get that huge damage resistance and damage buff, okay? I mean, we go either one, but for PvE, I highly recommend Recharger being the strongest one, okay? 
Now there's other abilities you can use. The heal ability is basically mandatory. But say you want to do other things, you can go with the support station. And support station is like an all-time healing thing. And there you go, pulse. And if you look at my pulse stats, alright, look at the base, look at mine. Critical hit chance, I had 38.5% critical hit chance and 85.4% critical hit damage to anyone I scan. So, the most powerful scanning one is technical scanner. Damage is increased when attacking any hostile target to death by a pulse scan. Since I have all these cooldown reduction with my weapons, and skill power and electronics add cooldown reduction, it allows me to keep on pinged at all times if I want to go ping. So if you want to help with damage, you can go pulse, I call it ping, and you can keep on pulse almost entirely the whole time. All right, But a hill only required one in my opinion. Other than that, you basically go with either one you want. I mean, if they had their pros and cons, I think Probably, in my opinion, Smart Cover is the strongest one. Just because that damage resistance is so big. It basically allows you to tank some things. Even I'm able to tank a few shotgun shots. Not a bunch, but like two or three shotgun shots from elites. And if you play Division, you know what I'm talking about. Those shotgunners are nuts. But it's really helpful. And for my, basically my signature skill, I go Recovery Link. Because of the res, is really useful. I mean, I have a short cooldown on it. Does my skill power being so high? I use it often. I won't lie. So I mean, if so, if someone is out of your range, or someone dropping low health, or if you're dropping low health, just use it. You're no use to anyone dead. And if you can't get someone to res them, this can probably res them. Uh, that's also to be said that defense link and survivor link is very competitive with it. For one, it lasts a hell of a lot longer. Survivor link, recovery link, other than the res, is pretty useless to be honest. I mean, look at the hill and the instant hill rate. Let's do some math. The healing rate is for 7,000. We'll just do 7,000. It's for 5 seconds. So 7 times 5 is 35,000. The instant hill is 25,000. So I'll add that up. And that equals, what, six, 60,000? My hill hits for 55,000. And it's up within seconds. That's my cooldown weapons. Bungie... Not Bungie, oh god. Ubisoft. Oopsie Soft, as they're more popular known lately. Fix Recovery Link and make it worthwhile, please. Let it scale with skill power and be really cool. Or have a longer duration, that'd be awesome. I'd settle for like a 10, 15 second duration of healing for 7,000 HP. That would get me, that, I'd like that. But, that's not going to happen, probably. So, that's the basic skills, um... That's my preference. You can do whatever you want, but the heal is basically mandatory. And I highly recommend using the Filiberator or Booster Shot. If you have the chest, you automatically get Overdose. Unless you just want a higher healing output. That's all up to you. If you want something that heals really fucking hard, like look how much mine actually heals for, 75k. This one heals for about 20k less. Overdose heals for a lot. But the way I see it is, with your cooldowns, you're going to get your heal back up often enough to where... That much over healing is not as effective, and you just put another heal out on people. So that's why I think oh, just gotta go with the right That res is too useful. All right, so let's look at talents. Talents. There's some key talents, and there's some not so key talents. Key talent here is triage. 100%. You need triage. Healing, heal an ally with skill to reduce skill cooldowns by 15%. That's your whole thing. You're healing allies, and once again, skill cooldowns. So effectively, for a while. It was broken. Because I could heal multiple allies and basically have, if they step in and out of your heal skill with the mastery for heal, they can reduce my cooldown to zero. That's not as useful anymore. It's not as strong. I think they fixed the real bug with it. But it also affects their cooldowns. So cooldown reduction and it affects group. So more often I can heal multiple people, the more their cooldowns come down. So not only am I affecting mine, I'm affecting theirs. And that's huge. So say you have someone that CCs, got it. Fucking spam heals on them by maintaining headshots, and they can CC a crowd and that will never move. You see where this is going? I don't need to do damage because I'm supporting a group and letting them do all the damage to CC. All right? Another one I like is Battle Buddy. Revive down danger to reduce incoming damage by 50% for 10 seconds. All right? Here's something cool. It works with the hill thing. 
To my knowledge, it does. So, I shoot someone goes down, I shoot my hill, me and that person get 50% damage reduction. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And ideally, since I'm not a huge damage dealer, if someone goes down, I'm resing them, or my group maintains no damage or CC. Okay? That one's not required, but I highly recommend it. Alright? Now, there's some other ones that are really good, like... Survive critical save, use medkit during low health to increase damage resistance by 40% is really good. Or combat medic, use a medkit near allies to help group members and proxies within 20 meters by 40%. That's really good as well. And also, tech support. Kill hostile while any skill is deployed to extend active skill duration by 10%. This is really good as well. If you don't have high skill power like I have, or you don't have a caduceus or a weapon of cool headed, this one might be really good for you. It lets you focus more on killing, and like stuff like your smart cover will stay up longer. Or your healing station stays up longer, which makes it really useful. All right. Now, the two abilities I like is Steady Hands. Enter any cover to risk recoil by 25% for 10 seconds. So let's take a look. Let's take our Caduceus out. We're just going to aim in. We're going to put the center mass in here. There we go. Fire. Alright, so we went down to 40 bullets. 17 bullets, alright. See if we got the buff. We didn't go nowhere near as high. So say we're doing burst. We take cover, get the buff. That's a lot of cooldown reduction to headshots right there. That makes that very useful in trying to get your headshots, which means you get more reduction, alright? I like that. Recoil reduction affects the agent. I also like the one that's none. Headshots so I'll still have a 50% chance to knock a similar bullet. I mean, your cool-headed ability, if you look at it again, performing headshot, headshot reduces all skill cooldowns by 5%. You need to go on red shots anyways. Might not have ability that amplifies it and gives you more ammo. I mean, can't go wrong with that. Now we're about to have some incoming. Let's go kill him real quick. We're going to do this. All right, smart cover up. All right, overheal ourselves. Quality our sniper. There we go. There's one left. And what we'll do is we're gonna hit us a little bit. Hey, friend. We're gonna come here. We're gonna come smart cover. He's just burning us. He is not going to be able to kill us. I guarantee it. I mean, with the damage reduction we have from our smart cover. I mean, now it's going to start hurting us a little bit. But, oh, not anymore. That goes away. You're not going to hurt me. So stop. I walk back off our Gary Hill over shields up. Now, mind you, this is a level 25 enemy. That's not saying much. But, it does work on other enemies of similar level and strength. And it works a little bit well on, say, challenge modes. I'm able to tank some enemies. Sometimes I get melded, mind you, if I'm taking tons of fire. But, we have some of our group that runs, like, in the group I run with, he runs more of a tanky and high aggro build. So, ideally, I'm not getting shot by everyone. So, that's pretty much my build on Division. That's how I play. I think it's a really fun build. It's really useful to be able to be that supportive. At the same time, I'm not weak. You see a lot of support builds or stuff where they have extremely low HP or they have extremely low firepower. Not this build. All it is is stacking the right items and the right mods and you can get very effective skill power, very effective abilities and still do damage and stay alive. All right? I know this is sort of a random video, and it's really long. All right? If people are enjoying this and they want to hear more or a shortened down version, let me know in the comments. I'm more than willing to do it. If you want to see more Division, let me know as well. And I'm more than willing to play some Division for you guys. I do it during streams, but I know a lot of you guys on, that watch this on YouTube don't have time to show up for streams. So that's okay. I'm willing to put it on YouTube if you want. All right? Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a lovely day. See you later. Bye-bye.